So let me show you some of the technique I use for sculpting the character's hair. Uh, of course, there's a variety of different hair types. We have facial hair. Um, we have more stylized, clean hair, such as a beard. And then we also have the clump hair that we're going to put on top of the character's head that's going to have a little bit more of a stylized, chiseled feel to it as opposed to individual strands. So to create the eyebrows, I'm going to just very simply work right on top of the main mask that I have showing uh, using the rake tool. And the rake is going to give me this really nice feel of flow. You can also use the weave tool, but the rake has a little bit more of a chunkier um, geometry to it as I'm sculpting. So the first thing I want to do is lay in just kind of a ground base of pattern texture to define the general shape and thickness of the eyebrows. And so I'm going to do that all uniformly. Uh, following, of course, the underbase of the sculpture. And then to make the hair look unique and different, I'm going to increase the size of the brush and just hit in certain areas. What I'm trying to do is achieve a bit of a clunkiness and uh, chunky pattern throughout. And you can see how fast this came together. Uh, one of the things I'll do at, at this stage now is just finalize it by um, just hitting certain areas and touch up. Uh, but it, it is a very fast technique, and one of the things you have to really try to learn is not to overdo it. You know, uh, it once it's done, just leave it alone and move on. That's the whole trick, right, is to uh, work quickly. And I'm quite happy with the eyebrows. So uh, next I'm going to show you how I go about doing the beard. And that's just a slightly different technique. Uh, the way that technique works is I'm going to start with masking out the area. So right in the lower lip to chin area, I'm going to begin to start painting in my masking. I'm going to work back and forth, eventually fine-tuning and polishing the mask as I go along. Uh, you can also adjust the focal shift when doing your mask so that if you want to really have a much cleaner sharper line just bring your focal shift down into like a negative 100 and that will give you a very hard edge uh, of course the level of detail that you have in the geometry is also going to help you pull a much tighter line so all those things come into play when you're doing this technique here I've reversed the mask now so that I'm painting in the negative and I'm cleaning up the areas that I went outside the line. I want the edge of the beard to be a very sharp point and so I'm just going to pull that line nice and straight and clean. Once I'm happy with the mask then I'll begin to just start laying in some fill. Uh, in this case I'm using the clay tubes brush and I'm just going over the open area to increase um, certain areas such as the very tip of the chin um, going to have his beard come to a point so I'm going to build up a little bit more mass in that area but because it does have to come out quite a bit and I didn't put this into my original base mesh I'm going to use the move tool and I'm going to literally just pull that point out but you have to be careful when you do this because there's not enough geometry to support it so you get some really strong pinching in areas uh, again, I'm not concerned about it because I'm going to go back in later on and add some retopping wherever it's necessary. But what I'm looking to do right now is just get a nice, sharp, clean point. And once I have that set up where I'm comfortable with it, then I can begin laying in more of the texture of the hair along the same style and idea that I did earlier with the eyebrows. Uh, but this time I'm going to work with the texture a little bit differently. The eyebrows were a bit more loose and a bit of an S shape. Um, here this is more of a refined beard or um, stylized hair that is well manicured. So I want this to uh, have much straighter lines. From time to time I'll even use the clay tubes with the alpha turned on just to uh, build a little bit of a grain, a little bit of a structure to form the direction that the hair will be going in. 
Um, it's good to sometimes have a little bit of a grainy pattern. So when I'm done with this, it'll take on a little bit more of an appearance of like sculpted bone. Um, and then the sculpt will go on top of that really nice with, with the hair. Now moving on to the hair on top of the character's head, once again I'm going to use some of the previous technique with some new technique. So after I mask out the general area that I would like to fill the hair in, this time I'm going to go over to my deformations palette and use the inflate tool and I'll just simply inflate the hair up, give myself a nice level of thickness overall over the entire scalp. I also want to inspect it and make sure that I'm happy with the general shape, that this is the shape that I really want his hair to follow along with. So I'll hit all of the edges with the smooth brush just to soften any of those really sharp uh, edges. Uh, inflate tool has a tendency to uh, give you some really rough edges. So I'm going to soften that first before I remove the mask. And then when I'm happy, then I'll do the smooth one more time with the mask off. Now at this stage, I'm going to use a variety of different techniques. And these techniques are going to build up one on top of another. So I'm going to start to layer the clay tubes with the alpha off. So I want a nice, soft, almost liquidy type of flow to the hair. And I'm going to build that up into layers, uh, starting with a very thick line and then going to a smaller line where I want to define the edges to the chiseled appearance of the hair. I'll also have X symmetry on from time to time. Uh, in this particular instance, I have X symmetry on simply because I want to start getting some underlay of the hair quickly. But then I'll go ahead and I'll turn that off to ensure that I'm working asymmetrical. And this character is going to have a part on one side of his head, so I don't want the hair to actually look symmetrical throughout. So I'll lower my draw size now and pull the hair part. Uh, this is just to give me kind of a, a ground base of where to follow along so that I can part the hair from one side and the other and I'll eventually kind of close up that hole uh, by adding in more of the mass so that the hair has a nice pull coming out from within the part. A lot of this shape is tends to be the letter C or the letter S. Uh, it's a very flowing kind of feel. And you'll notice the smaller of the draw size is giving me the, the higher level so this is where I'm defining where my chisel is going to actually become for each of the individual clumps that I'm building out. One thing to keep in mind, it's very important, is when you do this technique, you always want to think about the hair laying on top of each other. And so when you first start, lay in the initial ground hair and then the hair that's going to lay on top of it so you get this really nice overlapping feel. It's very natural looking. So I, I finished all of the basic massing of the hair now. And I'm going to start going in with the MAH cut and start defining the actual chisel of that. Uh, one thing that's very important when I do this is to make sure that you start to soften uh, the some of the interior lines because if the line is too hard, when you pull the cut, it's going to have kind of a cliff, a drop off, and we don't really want that. We want it to almost be like a, a tapered chisel on both sides. So you have to be very careful. Now what I'm doing is I'm working in uh, kind of a dual pattern where with the Alt key, I'm cutting down. I release the Alt key to inflate up and then I'm also holding down shift from time to time to soften an edge and I do that simultaneously uh, throughout the work so there's a lot of this back and forth throughout the entire process uh, and it works really well it's very seamless and it flows uh, effortlessly so once you start using this technique give it a try I think you'll see just how quickly uh, you'll begin to define uh, the character's hair 
And so here's the final effect of the hair. Overall, it took approximately 20 minutes of sculpting time to achieve this full finished piece.